bringing people in from other countries just with the value of a dollar compared to wherever they're from. They're willing to do the work because it's more than they would make at home. People see stuff on social media and they just want to start making more money right away. Mm -hmm. As soon as they get into the workforce, they have like no skills, but they want to be making a lot more money, but they don't have the skills to, to back it up. Having somebody not buy your product, it's your fault. You're not gonna do a good job or your product's not good enough or not doing a good job to show it off. We are closing the gap on half a million views on YouTube. That's not the craziest part. The craziest part is that most of you guys are not subscribed to the channel. Do us a solid, smash that subscribe button and share it with a friend. So there's a very well-known person that you guys know. Um, and he once said, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. So I want to transition that to you. Um, don't ask what your community do for you, but ask what you can bring to the community as well. Today we got the director of MCDC, Kristen. Welcome. Welcome Thank back. You. Thanks. Those are powerful words first thing in the morning. It's first. Yeah, you got to start it off. <laughs> got to start it off hot. Got to start off hot. Um, but I just think it's like everyone, a lot of people always think like they just want to come like to you. Like, what could you do for me? But it's like, what are you going to bring to? Like, what value? Because that's the only, that's the best way business is done. Like, when there's an exchange and both sides are happy. So you're not just giving out handouts. Yeah. Is there a question there? <laughs> I just want to know your thoughts. Like, what, what are your thoughts kind of... Um, yeah. Um, no, we definitely, I get a lot of questions, a lot of business coming. Do you have any grants for me? Do you have any grants for me? That's the biggest question. And um, it's a hard one because grants are promoted as being readily available. There are grants everywhere. There's so much money coming down. And, and that's true. But the one misconception or the one unknown is how to access those funds and who's eligible. And so private business is not always eligible. Um, I do feel like there are some projects that I wish were eligible housing, um, being one of them. I had somebody reach out and say they've got a commercial building on main street and they want to rehab the upper level to apartments. Um, so that doesn't really answer your question, how I feel about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but in my job, I do, um, when I talk to businesses, I do consider the impact they'll have on our community because economic development is about quality of life, not only um, community wealth and generating that wealth and bringing companies that will help assist in that, but what are they going to bring to Morgan County that enhances the quality of life for its residents? That's really important. I grew up in Eastern Colorado, so I know um, the strong opinions of development and that dirty word and what it can mean to some people. So anytime a project comes in the office, I like to look at the project holistically and are they a good neighbor? Are they going to be a good neighbor just because they're sponsoring events and throwing money at us now to do different things? Are they going to be consistent in that to where it's a long-term benefit to the community community and not just one and done? So I guess, like you said, it's a dirty word, like the development stuff. Mm -hmm. So I guess, what is it? Because I think there's a lot of people, like we say it in business, people can talk regardless. Mm -hmm. They can talk good or bad. They're going to be talking. So I always sound like, tell them, tell your side of the story more so that way, you know, uh, so it's like kind of for you guys, like what is more kind of economic development? Yeah. What so I, do? I tried to put a spin on it because um, economic development is really about the health of a community and building that health. So I like to say the economic <coughs> health, we build the economic health of Morgan County. Um, so that's really what the goal is. It doesn't always look um, from a development push. It's not always development and development isn't always, vertical. Um, it can be horizontal infrastructure that a community needs better streets. That's all a part of economic development. So I really like to push, um, when somebody asks about economic development, it's really the economic health of where you live and what your community needs to be healthy into the future for a long time. But is it targeted more, what do you say, like towards businesses or residents or both? I mean, it's, it's, Double, it's two-handed. So, you know, the the health is for the people that live here, but then you have to have a healthy environment for businesses to want to come here and to thrive here. So it's it's both. And you're not like a government entity, right? No. Um, MCEDC is a nonprofit. We're a 501c6. Um, there's other designations, C3, C4. So we're the C6. Um, so we are not considered a charitable entity. Um, so we can participate in... Um, political agenda, um, political activity. Uh, MCEDC does not. Um, the question came up just because it's an election year and a lot of politics. We were um, in a photo with a candidate and it was 
somebody approached me and said, you can't do that as a nonprofit. And as a C6, we can, we weren't promoting it. We happened to be in a picture, we shared it. And so they took it as we were supporting that candidate and backing them. And we were just sharing that that candidate was spending time with us. We were glad they were at the event. Um, so, um, should, you should be asking why you, the other candidate isn't there. That means they're not informing <laughs> themselves on stuff, right? You know? Yeah, they're I mean, not at the stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah, because a good point. because like politics, like nobody wants to talk about them. But like when it comes to business, especially, it's very important. People should be talking about it. Hey guys, let's take a quick break from the podcast. We want to help business owners just like you stay competitive in today's marketplace. So for a limited time, we're giving you ten percent off your next video project, whether it's a brand video, social media content, or ads. Just mention this podcast to get started. Let's get back to the show. It is, and this candidate um, is at a local, uh, a state level, so it was important for them to be engaged with the business community in the way that they were. Um, we host monthly events with businesses that are investors in MCEDC to learn about their needs and challenges, so that was the event they attended, and um, we shared it because we want people to know that we are hosting events and we're engaging with our investors and we want our investors to engage. So we're always saying, come party with us. <laughs> and then that's the difference. Like you guys aren't at different events promoting your stuff. You, you host your own events. So that way like, people, if they choose to want to learn more about you guys or what's going on, they can come. Like you're not targeting specific demographics. Or no, anything. definitely not. We, um, we try to be as transparent as we can. And, and why I say we host investor events, we do invite non-investors just to share and educate on what MC EDC is and who we are, what we focus on, and what we do. So. When's, your, when's your next one? Because I think people, uh, a lot of people complain that mm -hmm. there isn't stuff out, but then there is stuff out and they, they don't go. I they know. just don't get involved. So, <laughs> well, and that, that's the piece about being transparent. It's like we host these events um, so that we can say that we're sharing information. Whether or not you choose to attend is up to you. And then at the end, you really can't say you didn't know about it because we. I mean, we bombard our the people that engage with us. We send multiple emails about our events and um, try to send updates on uh, who's going to be presenting. About the, most of them are project developments, so um, educating the community on what projects are coming, especially in the districts they're located in. So, do you have um, one planned out yet? Where I, you know, it's toward the end of the year. I hate to say that. Okay. Um, I think in October and November we have two events coming up that will be open to the public um, to attend. Um, October, I think, might be a free event. November, there it's a luncheon, so there will be a fee. But um, right now, we're planning in October with some partners, a uh, renewable energy education lunch, um, just to come and learn about the projects, um, why they're choosing Morgan County, what their development processes look like, and then an opportunity to voice concerns um, to, to individuals presenting. And then in November, we're doing ED101, You're an Investor, Now What? And that is really to just engage with our investors and non-investors um, to educate them on what economic development is, who MCEDC is, how we operate, and then why it's so important to engage with us because our the people that we engage with are the ones that drive our work. So if you're if we're talking to you once a month, we know what your needs are, and if we're hearing from five other entities with similar needs, then we're really gonna focus on that, um, much like workforce. So um, that's why the engagement is really important, why we push to have people reach out to us. We are closing the gap on half a million views on YouTube. That's not the craziest part. The craziest part is that most of you guys are not subscribed to the channel. Do us a solid, smash that subscribe button and share it with a friend. What type of businesses are you guys trying to, cause you guys try to attract also, right? To be able to have a healthier, I guess, like you said, healthier uh, development, I guess in that area. But what are, what are some businesses that you try to attract or industries? So in traditional economic development, um, you're um, at the the county level that where we sit, you're, we're trying to attract a primary employer. So um, a not I can't say another cargo because we cannot sustain another cargo, but a large company um, that has um, a 50 plus employees, I would say be considered a major employer in Morgan County. Um, and we say primary employer because they employ a lot of people and then those people, their employees then spend their money in the community and build that community wealth and they support the secondary businesses, all the retail, gas, grocery stores. So there's the primary and the secondary. Okay. Yeah. I think that's important because a lot of people think they just come and a lot of people don't sometimes don't like when the big companies come, mm -hmm. but they grow the health of like, that's what runs America, small businesses. That's what makes them yeah. grow. Yeah. Um, and it, it's hard. That was um, a couple of years ago. So I started with MCEDC in 2020 and 
a couple of misconceptions. One, I go talk to a company, they say they're coming and it's done. Now I, I have, I think two or three companies I was thinking about this morning, um, that I've been working with since late 2020 and they're still not publicly known that they're even coming to Morgan County and they're coming. It's just, it's a process. Economic development is a marathon. It's not a race. So it takes years for a company that I engage with initially to actually come and stand up a building in Morgan County. Um, is it permitting reasons or just financial reasons for them or, or what, what's the... it's all of them, just development project, large development projects, just take time site selection, permitting, um, depending on the industry, environmental studies, financing if they have investors or if they're seeking investors um, just a lot of things can mm-hmm. um, delay a project's timeline from start to finish so how like early do people does like the public know about a new business coming in as soon as they submit a permit application with the county so um once they submit a permit application it becomes public knowledge so they they try to get all their ducks in a row before it goes public and they often will do some community engagement events just to get a pulse on what the people will think and if they need to adjust their project um, in any way how do you balance like the the development side where like you're trying to attract new businesses but then also like taking care of the businesses that are already here yeah because yeah. there's probably a lot of people are like what about us it's tough balance. It's tough balance. And that's why we want that engagement. So we know how we can focus locally because the, the recruitment process is pretty standard. You attend events or you market Morgan County, um, to targeted industries to try to recruit them here. Local businesses, um, everybody's different. So we try to find that one local consistent need that everybody has that we can, um, support or make an impact in. So the, the most recent one, which we talked about last time, and I won't go down that rabbit hole again is workforce um, development. And that's one where people always ask, why are you in workforce development? What does that have to do with economic development? Well, if we don't have a workforce, I can't recruit. And that's one of the first questions they ask is what's your workforce look like? And it's not, I was fresh in the industry and I would say, Oh, it's agriculture, manufacturing. And they're like, no, how many people? And I was like, Oh, none. <laughs> we don't have any I, don't people. <laughs> I don't have a hundred, I don't have a hundred people to just send your way. So um, for a couple of years, I just kept saying that and then felt defeated. And then that's how we got into workforce development is we have a, a need for our existing businesses for workforce development and um, finding workers. And so if we aren't solid with our existing businesses, there's no way we can recruit another one because I'll, I'll never get behind or encourage somebody, oh, just go steal from them. They've got they've got all the workers. You need to go steal from them. They can figure it out on their own. That's so how, 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 I guess how do you recruit more workers? That's the magical yes. question. <laughs> <laughs> well, I said we weren't going to go down this rabbit hole again. Um, our demographics, and we're one of the unique counties in northeastern Colorado, where we have an outward migration every year, a very large number of the 18 to 24-year-olds. And that's the entry-level workforce. It's the entry-level pay, which is what we really need to recruit a new business um, or even support existing businesses is that entry level workforce so that they can grow within and stay in that career pathway with the industry. So we're targeting those, um, graduates out of high school and trying to target them and engage with them to help find them jobs locally. And then, um, we do consider future growth. So we're a hotspot for, um, solar projects. So there's a need for electricians and solar maintenance and a lot of those trade skills. So we're targeting those projects in the near future with those high school students saying, Hey, if you start, you know, engaging now, you'll, by the time you graduate, there could be a job for you in this, if you're interested and if you would stay here. Cause I think one of, I mean, I'm interested to know what your guys' thoughts, both of you guys on this, but so they, you know, young, younger generations, they're here and stuff, and then they leave. And then there is no workforce. And then that's when they start bringing in people with visas and stuff from other places to work here. Because they, we go back to it, they need a workforce. So then it's like, then what do you do? Because then the people that are here, you know, it's a never ending cycle of they complain why there isn't more work. Then there's work, but they don't want to work for that wage. So they bring workers that are, and it's a never any cycle so I, I guess in that like what what do you do I don't know if I, <laughs> that's I, I a good don't question because <laughs> I think it's because if you, you can see it from the business standpoint and then mm-hmm. from the employee standpoint and there's two different it just depends well there's a willingness to work right yeah um, the, yeah at the, the wage that's being offered to you and not everybody's willing to work at a certain wage and it's been proven that um, bringing people in from other countries just with the value of a dollar compared to wherever they're from, 
they're willing to do the work because it's more than they would make at home. And so a lot of them are seasonal and they spend eight months out of the year here, send their money home, and then they go home for four months and then they keep doing it over and over. Um, so there's that, that willingness of existing residents and citizens that they don't want to do that work. But somebody has to do the work. I think it's combined with like people see stuff on social media and they just want to start making more money right away. Mm-hmm. Like as soon as they get into the workforce, they have like no skills, but they want to be making a lot more money, but they don't have the skills to, to back it up. So I think it's people just, I don't know if it's social media or just everything's more expensive now, but they seek out those higher paying jobs, mm-hmm. but those higher paying jobs are like towards the bigger cities, but then it also comes with higher cost of living and higher cost of everything. So then it kind of like cancels out when like, yes, they're getting paid more an hour, let's say, but then their, their take home ends up being the same over there as it would be if they were, if they would have just stayed here. Yeah. And there is that, I mean, we surveyed the high school students that leave, um, 30% leave to go to college. So at least 70% that leave of that population leave for a job. And a large number of those that leave don't realize there are similar jobs here that they could stay for. And some of them just want to get out because they're tired of small town. They want to go. I understand that. Um, they eventually come back, but it's when they're in their thirties and they've started a family and they realize that raising a family in a smaller town because of the cost of living difference, you know, when you're single in your early twenties, you can go out and spend a hundred bucks at the bar and it's not a big deal. When you get married and start having kids, that looks significantly different and your lifestyle changes and your, you know, you could be making the same amount of money, which was great at one point, but it's now it's suddenly not enough. So you look at lifestyle changes and then you typically come back to where, what you know, um, which is for us, the rural communities. Um, but a lot of them just, they don't know what's, what's here and they don't think they can make that much money here. And some can actually make more if they stayed. So only 30% people leave to go to college. Mm -hmm. I thought that would be a higher number. Yep. That's interesting. And a and large percentage. Yeah, a large percentage of them come back. Don't finish and come back. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I just find that, like, interesting because when I was in high school, I mean, it was some time ago, but they, they would just promote the, the hell out of college. Yeah. So, like, was, everybody would go to college because... You have to go to college. You have to get a four-year degree. Exactly. In anything. It didn't really matter what it was, but you had to have that four-year degree. Mm-hmm. And there, I think there's still some... Um, jobs out there that they say for your degree and it, sometimes it will say in anything and it's like well, what's the point yeah <laughs> if for your degree doesn't mean i'm i have the knowledge to that job you just want to say that i went to college for four years in the, you know yeah um, and if i mean depending on the college or the the path you go like it sometimes it's just worthless going yeah yeah no and and that's changing thankfully they're getting away from pushing kids in college um for a number of reasons um but back to that social media and stuff, and I think just the perception of any business, like we have our revolving loan fund and we have our loan applications, and one of the requirements is to have a business plan in place with um, cash flow projections, and um, there are unrealistic expectations of what you think you're going to make, and we have to be the bearer of bad news of that's not realistic, and if you know, let's adjust the numbers. And then sometimes they don't like the way the numbers adjust, but they're realistic, so they might not move forward with that business plan because somebody, hopefully we help them um, reevaluate it in a positive way. I mean, not, not like your numbers suck. You're, you're never going to make it. It's just like, you, what's your backup? Like, what's your... Let's be realistic How here. are you going to supplement this? Let's be realistic. If we loan mm-hmm. you $10,000, your cash projections are not realistic. Um, so this is more realistic. Are you comfortable with it? Do you have... Um, another form, source of income that can support this. But um, any first-time business owner, even kids, your expectations of cost of living or revenue generation for your business, they're just unrealistic. And they, you know, you see people that have been doing um, a certain industry for decades, but and they're successful, but it took them decades to get there. It wasn't they just, you know... Yeah. Farmers and ranchers. They didn't just buy 10 acres. No, they, they maybe started with 10 acres, but they've grown it over time to thousands of acres, and that's where it becomes profitable for them. So, you know, you don't buy a cow calf pair and instantly you're making money on it. And, yeah. you know, it's uh-huh. there's just that those unrealistic expectations, of, I think, for a lot of new business owners and young kids when they're graduating high school of what life is. Yeah. Do you guys like pretty much help everybody in the county, or do you favor like? You have to be an investor to, for us to help you, or how does that work? No, um, we it tricky question on how to answer that. 
Um, if you're existing in Morgan County, we want to help you be successful. It's, you know, we're nonprofit, so we're publicly and privately funded. So we don't have like government funding where we're guaranteed funding every year. So we do ask um, if we're working with you on a consistent basis that you become investors so that we can keep going because you're paying our operating, you're paying salaries, and we can do more with the more investor money that we have. So we, we do ask that. Um, large corporations that are considering Morgan County and they reach out and they're asking for a lot of information. I think asking them to be investors shows a couple of things. One's they're committed to the community and they want to be engaged with us. They want to invest in the community. Another is they ask a lot more than um, a main street business is going to ask for help. So it requires more time. It requires all three of us often to help um, with those. So short answer, no, it's a little bit complicated on, on what that looks like. But um, we do because we are very cognizant of our private investors. So we want to help as much as we can. and. If we're not doing enough, we ask. We send out surveys all the time. We send out monthly newsletters. We send out surveys. What can we do better? What do you need from us? Um, we don't get a lot of responses. <laughs> so. It's going to spam. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the more people want from you guys, like the more they have to put into it. Well, it's, it's not just like a I mean, like a take take take. I mean, it just makes sense. I think it it makes perfect sense. Like it goes, you're married now, but if you have a girlfriend, it's like. She just wants more time. Like it has to be official or not. You know, you can't like yeah. Like you can't expect more and not put more in. Like it goes back to like the, the opening quote. Like don't ask what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. So like you have to like give a little bit so you can actually take some and not just be take 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 because nobody likes that person. Yeah, and you know we are a service focused nonprofit organization. We serve the community. So. Um, to ask everybody that we help to become investors, it's not realistic. Um, it's not fair because we do have long time. We have investors that have been investors for 35 plus years. And I've talked to them a handful of times. Just they believe in Morgan County and the, the future economic health of it. So they continue investing year after year. They find the importance of that. There are others that just want something out of us. They're an investor for a year, maybe two, and then they drop off. So it's just, you know, it, it becomes tricky because we do have a, an organization to run and keep going. So we have to continually raise money. Um, and the less we have to focus on raising money, the more we can focus on actually doing the work for the county and what we want to get done. Um, so that's why being publicly and privately funded is so important is we have those different revenue streams um, so that we can keep growing. I think it's almost like it's pretty much a business like like that. Like if somebody comes to me and they want... I say I got these two packages. This one is the hall inclusive is this. It's more expensive because it requires more of my time. This one is just like this. Or I can just give you like free information, consultation. I can tell you how to film the videos. I can tell you how to do the marketing. But then you give them the resources and they still don't do it. So you're like, I can help you more. But then at that time, it's like, I need a little bit more of your commitment in it. So I think it's, they got to have skin of the game. Because if not, I mean, they're not... Mm -hmm. It's not a fair relationship in my perspective. Yeah, we've got um, a tiered structure. So we've got small business and nonprofit package. And then we have a corporate package where the benefits and services you get are different and they're kind of <laughs> what's tiered. their quotes? Like, uh -oh, like uh -oh. I mean <laughs> like they're tiered, but um <laughs> It's like you they're a bigger business, so you the, know that they can afford it. Well, they just require different services than a small business. So if you're a small business, you have less than 25 employees and you're in probably a growth stage. So that looks a little bit different than a company that's coming in wanting at help from start to finish or bringing a development project in. And that's typically that corporate per, that corporate entity is they're a new developer and they're coming in and they need a lot more handholding and introductions and they want a lot more work on our part. Um, so it's their higher tiers. I mean, the highest tier we have is $5,000. We say five thousand plus wishful thinking, um, but the small business starts at three hundred dollars. So, and you get a pick. We don't say, well, you're, you know, it's. We have it broken out with. Hopefully, you see the value in the different tiers and how we've broken them out, but what you get out of them. So it's, um, yeah. Yeah, like you said, you said it right there. It's like the value. Hopefully, they see the value and they do it. And that's why you give free, 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 and then if they really like it they'll pay yeah that's pretty much just how it is what are the some of the biggest challenges that businesses have when they're like trying to come to morgan county um you know i would say morgan county itself is pretty easy um compared to other counties i sat in on a um 
pre-application meeting with the county a couple weeks ago and it was a couple gentlemen from larger city and we were talking about the timeline of permitting it could be done in six months if everything falls perfectly in place and they walked down like wow having it all done in six months that's phenomenal um we have all that stuff done in denver and it takes two years to get the permit so i feel like the price the process is pretty easy um i think some of our infrastructure and land availability and like our utilities, I think that can be a challenge. Um, water is always one that large corporations need a lot of water. And while we have water, it's, you know, it's important that we don't just say, here's all of our water. Um, some of them to us for a million gallons a day, a million gallons a of water million? a day. That's a lot. Yeah. What? Because so, if, if you're getting that much water, then it's probably, it's, Water's coming from somewhere. It's got to so be then you got the, taking from someone or something. Yeah, and then you got the the, ra- the farmers and stuff, ranchers. Yeah. Like, what, what's going on? I need water too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's um, it's tricky. And like for me, where it becomes a challenge is what fits with what we have and who we are and, you know, the quality of life that we want for Morgan County as the residents and being very proud of where the county came from and the history and the agriculture and being able to maintain that, but also... Um, be innovative and move forward so that we don't become a ghost town in the future because we're just constantly saying no to everything. So what, what, I mean, now I'm curious to know your thoughts on like the solar stuff with um, like agriculture, because if they're solar, it takes up so much acreage and that could be, you know, farming land or agriculture for cattle and stuff. What's the, (laughs) what's the, um, like the stuff that other stuff, maybe not just you, but like uh, what other people are saying around the community. Mm-hmm. What other? Because you said if we don't kind of start do, innovating a little bit of stuff, then you you become a ghost town. I mean, step back a little bit on that. You have to be innovative, but then you also have to be part of that conversation, and you have to be engaged and know what's going on and help write the story for Morgan County. Um, there's there are the people that are engaged and they voice their opinion, whether they like, they like it or not, whether other people like it or not. They are voicing their concerns, and that's so important because you're helping write the story for Morgan County going forward. If you just sit back and I don't like that, I'm just gonna, it pisses me off. I don't like it. I don't want it here, not in my backyard. It's probably going to happen anyway because there are a couple things that come into play property rights. If you own the land, you have the right to do with the land what you want, um, unless there's some um, factor that makes it an illegal practice, you know, um, but you do, when you own land, you get to do with it what you want. Um, Morgan County is a right to farm County. Um, (laughs) 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 so, you know, um, so I, I have, I, I don't know that I can really answer that question. I have to stay neutral in my opinion doesn't matter as an organization our opinion is not does not matter what our job is to do is to provide you with the information as the residents and the business owners in morgan county and let you decide what fits here and if you don't like it then you you know we can connect you with the developers and you can talk to them i know there's some been some projects that revise their plans because of feedback they got and they wanted to be good neighbors there are others that don't really care and they're just going to move forward because they can so educating yourself on the processes and that's where we want that's why we want that engagement is we provide so many resources for education on what's happening in morgan county and how it happens that when we hear we don't know what's going on it's it kind of makes me cringe so i'm like well we're putting it out there and if you're not an investor and that's why you're not hearing about it you can still engage with us you can still ask us if you want to know more but you're not in a place to become an investor we'll invite you to to the information sessions and we do what we can to get out there. We, we can't make everybody happy. We've learned that. Um, we do the best that we can. Um, but that engagement piece is really hard for, really important for what you're you're asking and not one that I can really speak to. I, I was just wondering kind of like as the community as a whole, like is like, what do you say? Mo- most of the people are saying like, yeah, that's not a good thing for here. Or yeah, it's a good thing for here. Well, like what are the I think the it depends on where you live in the county. Okay. And the opinions are kind of, locational geographical in the county of what the the, opinion, the opinions of the people in that area um yeah i don't <laughs> come to the next meeting and find out <laughs> <laughs> we'll send you we'll put you on the yeah it, on the email it's list. new too so there's not a lot of information out there it's so new and that's scary and that fear can drive your emotions and instantly react in a way um, because you don't have all the information you know i'm not going to defend developers they 
if they weren't in it for the money, if there wasn't money in Morgan County, they wouldn't be looking here. You know, they're smart people. They, they go where the money is and they see something here that they're going to profit from. So there's something in Morgan County that's drawing them here. And I mean, that's, that's just how it is though. If, yeah. you, if you think about it, if they're not rewarded for all the work putting in, like why do you even do it? So, but people, I mean, I mean, you can go back to the pay. Like if you don't find a, a job rewarding, you're not going to do it. So somebody else is, and they will come and do it. Yeah. So it's the same it, business owner. And to put it at an employee perspective of, of the business owner, it's, if you're not going to do the job because the pay is not enough, somebody will same with business. I just think that there's most of the people, I guess most of the population there would be, they're more residents than business owners. And then there's business owners. And then there's like big business, you know, like corporations and stuff, but they're seeing it from this perspective and they're seeing it from a different perspective. And all in all, it is their fault because they're not doing a good way of communicating to them, but it's, it's hard for them to get to, it's hard for them to think like you because they're, they're seeing it from an employee, you're seeing it from a business owner, but it's your job to communicate it to them. Yeah, we, something I try to push is we're the gap entity. So we find the gaps in the economy. We try to fill in those gaps. So the workforce, um, the revolving loan fund is gap financing. So we look for the gaps. So when you're talking about the, the corporate guys down to the residents and the employees, we're kind of that gap of communication. Um, because a lot of corporate people, you know, they don't want to hear what people are upset about because then it adds another thing that they, another bucket they have to fill or work on. And that's, sometimes that's what happens and that's not always the ideal outcome. So we try to filter through, we try to have these events to get feedback and then we can take it back. And it's, you know, where that, that, that middleman, that gap, um, that helps kind of communicate the concerns or likes or what the needs are and where, where investment needs to go. What's one of the biggest things you've learned kind of in that gap when you're in between? Um, it's a hard place to be because, um, nobody likes talking. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know, there's, there are a couple of really loud voices out there that have no problem talking, but you already know what they're going to say because they talk yeah. all the time, but it says quiet voices that have the most information and knowledge of the community and the pulse on what people really think. And it's really hard to get engaged. I've, um, been in this role for four years. Yeah. Four. Four. Um, and there are some people that I've been reaching out to for four years trying to engage with, and I just made connection with them. Because it takes, it just takes time because they hear, oh, you're the director of economic development. I don't want to talk to you. You're going to make my life miserable. Well, no, I want to know how I cannot make your life miserable. What fits in, what development works and talk about what economic development is. It's not just big business. There's all these little pieces. And at the ED 101, we have, um, I've borrowed a pyramid and modified it for Morgan County, but it's a pyramid of what economic development activity is. And the, the foundation is leadership and all of these things have to be in place before you can get to that big major employer recruitment. There's infrastructure, education, healthcare, uh, workforce, all these things have to be not necessarily in place, but moving in the right direction before you can even start looking at that peak. Otherwise, you know, there's nothing in the middle and you get it and then it falls out from under you. So, um, just talking about it from that, that way of, we're not ready for this. Um, I would love if we were, and we might not be with my term with MCEDC, we might not be there because everything takes a while and you have to have community buy-in. You have to have business buy-in. All these things have to be working together to get to that, the top of the pyramid. So are there certain things you look for in a business that's coming in? Like either like their business internally or or like the characteristics of the business or like the business owners themselves? Do you you prefer certain types of business owners than others? Uh, Very small businesses. (laughs) And we look for ones that support existing businesses. So one that's going to be successful because they already have a customer in Morgan County. So, um, you know, the, the other piece to primary is the primary employer is producing, producing or manufacturing product that's exported out of the County. So that product get tax gets taxed on the way out and the County is generating revenue that way. But then the employees are getting paid and their money is also, their paychecks are also being spent in the County. So there's kind of two sources of revenue coming out of that. So that's why that primary employer is so important. But then we also have to have the secondary businesses to support the employees. So they want to spend their money here. We have a huge problem with leakage because of where we're located geographically. We're 45 minutes from anything and everything we could possibly want. And for if you grew up here, if you lived here for a long time, 45 minutes is not a big deal. You're happy to drive 45 minutes either direction and go shopping. It's how do we get people to spend money here so that we can attract those smaller businesses 
Chick-fil-A. Everyone wants Chick-fil-A. We are not going to get a Chick-fil-A for a couple of reasons. One, we don't spend our money here. They don't see any reason. Why would they put a Chick-fil-A here? We'll drive 45 minutes to Prairie Center to buy Chick-fil-A if we want it. And we don't have the rooftops. We don't have the population for it. So I shouldn't say never, but it's going to be a long time before we get a Chick-fil-A or any of those those types of retailers that everybody wants here because we don't spend our money here. When we start spending all our money here, we're a pretty wealthy county, um, people wise and uh, business wise. But when we so when we really focus on spending our money here, and retailers see that, then they'll start building here. But until that happens, that's that's a way that's a ways out. So looking at businesses, um, we're always looking for. Um, Something that will support our manufacturers, whether it's manufacturing widgets they need to buy um, to help support their business so they're buying local or it's easy, more easily accessible so that the supply chain's not disrupted for them. Um, feed for, for dairies, if we have a feed supplier or if we need another feed supplier that they can have more easy, easier access to um, those ancillary businesses that, that support our existing businesses is what I'm looking for right now um, in addition to the other developments that are coming our way. A lot of people want a Home Depot too. Yes, there's that. <laughs> how, do you, how do you get more people to want to buy here? Do you think there might be a, a gap between the business and consumer that maybe they have great uh, products or service that they have, but they don't, nobody knows about it. So I think that's where the chamber comes in um, is that shop local campaign that they push and really marketing those main street businesses and the businesses. When you had asked about, do we seek out certain investors? I try to stay away from asking a main street business to become an investor in MCEDC, not because I don't want to help them or engage with them, but I have been a small business main street owner before and um, resources are limited. And I know that. So there are, more important places like the chamber organizations that really promote and market Main Street that they should be members of and engaging. And I think that's where that shop local and encouraging people to buy everything here and coming up with different challenges or passports um, to support when you buy local and showing people like cost comparison. Um, you can drive to Denver and buy this. But did you know you can get it here and your time and gas and all of that? You're actually paying double sometimes for what you're doing. There is the need to get out in a way every once in a while. I get that. Um, but convenience, um, if you can show that convenience and availability locally, I think that would help. Yeah, where I was going with it is that I think it's a lot of the, the businesses that they don't do that. They're really good at what they do, but they don't – that's marketing. They don't market their business. They, they need to know how to market and be able to show it off. Like, And you can market in many different ways. There's not People just think that there's just one one route to go and that's it. They can work in a lot of different ways. And like yeah. having that, having somebody, and it goes back to like, you don't want to hear that, but having somebody not buy your product, it's your fault. Like you're not going to doing a good job or your product's not good enough or you're not doing a good job to show it off. Well, you just have to have your target market. Like who's your target market? You can't serve everybody. Your target market can't be everybody because then you have nobody because you're, your resources are being spread too thin trying to reach everybody. So really identifying who your target market is. Um, you know, we can do the flower shop since I had the flower shop. I thought everybody wanted flowers because I love flowers and everybody wanted flowers. So I just did a generic, like, buy flowers. Stupid. Um, <laughs> once I picked two target markets, my sales increased $50,000 in one year because funerals and weddings, the two things that you always want flowers for. And I just targeted all the funerals, uh, the funeral homes, and I put packages together that they could just show to families and they could pick package a b c and d and it would be delivered and they didn't have to look through a book or anything and then the weddings was the other pieces i just started targeting those two being very specific in those efforts and you know, get your day-to-day -day stuff that comes in every once in a while, but that day-to-day -day stuff is not what drives your business it's being very intentional and focused on where you're targeting and who your target market is because they're the ones that spend the money on it so you guys are being creative with it see like doing stuff like that and i think there's a lot of mm -hmm. i mean i guess it just comes down to the person though too yeah Do doing the stuff mm -hmm. So what's next for Morning County Economic Development? We're working on that. <laughs> <laughs> TBD. <laughs> That's for next time. Um, you know, we're in a growth stage. So we're, um, it's toward the end of the year. So we're budget season, strategic planning. Um, recently, there's been some confusion about MCEDC, who we are, what we do. Um, not understanding that we're a nonprofit, separate entity from any of the public bodies, um, separate in partnership with Morgan County, but not a department of Morgan County. And then same with the municipalities. Um, they all fund MCEDC and they all have representation on our board of directors. Um, 
but really like we have a campaign that kind of launched the end of last week of meet our board of directors so everybody could see who um is driving mcedc and um, why they're on the board and um, I have 13 board members, so 13 days of introductions. I think the first one went out this morning. Um, so just really educating the community on MCEDC and who we are to make sure that there's a clear message and everybody knows um, what our intentions are and what we're, our goals are. And then um, we're looking at our long-term plan. After four years, we were doing annual strategic plans. Now we're looking at long-term because we are in a different position financially than we were four years ago. And how do we maintain and sustain that um, for the continued growth of, of Morgan County? Because the more, the more we grow, the more work, work we can do, and the more that benefits the county. Awesome. So where, where could people reach out to ask you questions about whatever it is? There, there are concerns of what you guys all do. Um, they can call us at um, 970-467-7100, or they can email us. Um, director at morgancountyinfo.com or mcedc at morgancountyinfo.com. Cool. Well, appreciate it. Thanks for being a guest. Again. Thanks for having me.